to the parents, the boys and girls of practical computer comprehensive school. I am still Miss uh, Emma Precious and um, welcome back to our online classes, online learning. This class is for basic one. And we have our religion and national values. We'll be taking Christian religious studies. This is our week four. We are in week four. Topic for today. I see the topic for today. Um, religion and national values. Here we have Call of Abraham and God's promises. Call of Abraham and God's promises to Abraham. Okay? Call of Abraham and God's promises. So, boys and girls, by the end of this class today, you will be able to understand the covenant God had with Abraham. You understand the covenant God had with Abraham. And also, you identify God's promises to Abraham. You also get to know what God's promises to Abraham. Alright, so let's talk about Abraham. Let's talk about who? Abraham. So, Abraham was known as who? Abraham. Before God called him to leave his country, leave relatives and his father's home, where idols were worshipped, to go to a place that God would show him. Okay, so Abraham was a righteous man. So God called him to leave the country where he's born his relatives, his father's home, his father's property and go to a place that God will show him because they worship idols there. Abraham did not hesitate. Abraham obeyed God. He traveled to that place with his wife Sarah, Lot, his nephew, his slaves and proxy. Okay? He went there with his slaves and his practice. Abraham was to go to the promised land to start to worship one true God. So what was the reason why Abraham was to go to Canaan? So he can be able to do worship the one true God. Now he stopped at the oak of Moria, the holy the holy place at Shechem. He stopped where? At the oak of Moria, the holy place at Shechem. Here, when he got there, God showed him Canaan. Abraham began the journey from Haran. So, what's the name of Abraham's city? Haran. Okay, that's where Abraham began his journey. Now, when he got to Canaan, what did he do? He built an altar for God there. Abraham built an altar for God here. He also moved to Bethel and also built another altar for God. That shows that Abraham is a man that loves God so much. Abraham lost God so much. That's why he obeyed God's word instructions without any doubt, without any fear. He wasn't afraid. Ah, this new place God wants to take me to. Her. I don't know this place. Will I succeed there or will I fail? He didn't doubt. He didn't ask such questions. He just took his wife, took his proxies, took his um his slaves and uh, took his nephew Lord and they left to the place where God showed him so when he got to 
the altar of Moria, the holy place of Shechem. God showed the Canaan and told him, Abraham, this is your new home. This is your new home. Now, ask yourself, if you're asked to leave your mom and dad now, if God asks you to leave your mom and dad now and go to another place and stay, can you do that? You'll be afraid, right? You'll be afraid. For Abraham was not afraid. He obeyed God, took his family, his proxies, and left to a place where God showed him. Okay? So now let's look at God's promises to Abraham. God's promises to Abraham and also fulfillment of a son. Now, after Abraham has obeyed God, God was pleased with him. God was pleased with him. And he made some promises to him. He had a covenant with Abraham. He had a covenant with Abraham. So let's look at those covenants, the promises he made. God's promise and fulfillment of a son. God's promise and fulfillment of a son. So if you want to know more about the fulfillment of God and the promises he made to Abraham, you go to Genesis chapter 17 from verse 15 to 17. From verse 15 to 17. Or you go to Genesis chapter 21. From verse 1 to 7, they all talked about God's promises to Abraham. They all talked about what? God's promises to Abraham. So let's see God's promises to Abraham. First one, I will give you many children. I will give you many children. This is God talking to Abraham. Remember at that point when Abraham moved from his father's land to the promised land, he had no child. He had no child. Okay? So, mm -hmm. God is making a promise to him here now. He said, I will give you many children. I will give you many children. So, <laughs> You will be wondering, how is that going to be possible? Someone that doesn't even have even one child for him to have many children at that old age. At that old what? Age. Okay? That is what God promised to Abraham. He said, I will give you many children. Okay? Now, we will find out if God fulfilled that promise to Abraham. Okay, the second promise says, Your children will become a great nation. Your children will become a great nation. And I will bless you and make you your name famous. I will bless you and make your name famous. God said he will bless Abraham and make his name famous just by obeying him. He said again, I will bless I will bless you and I will bless okay, okay, sorry. You will be a blessing to other people. You will be a blessing to other people. So, God said to Abraham that you will be a blessing to other people. What does it mean to be a blessing to other people? How do you think you can bless other people? Or how can God use you to bless other people? Do you know there are some people that when you get to know them, when you are part of them, when you associate with them, you attract blessings to yourself? Do you know that? That is so 
true. Also, God can use it to bless other people by blessing you abundantly and you will be able to give. You give out to people around you. You solve their problems. When you're able to solve other people's problems, that is God using you to do or to bless them. Okay? That is God using you to bless them. So God said to Abraham, you will be a blessing to other people. That means God used Abraham to bless many other people around him. Okay? Also, God said to Abraham, I will bless those who bless you. I will bless those who bless you. Okay? That means those that blessed Abraham, they were blessed by God. He also says, But I will cause those who curse you. I will cause those who curse you. So whosoever causes um, Abraham, whosoever that caused Abraham, then was what also cost. Now remember that this promise is also is for us, the children of God. This promise is also is for us, the children of God, because we are the descendants of Abraham. Okay, we have we are the descendants of Abraham. So whosoever causes us, God will cause that person. Is it not true? Yes, that is true. And whosoever bless us, God will bless us too. So what does that mean? It means that you are supposed to be a blessing to other people. You're supposed to bless to be a blessing to other people. Also the blessings, the fulfillments, the promises, he said through you, that's through Abraham. I'll bless all the nations of the earth. Through you, I will bless all the nations of the earth. This is God talking to Abraham. So through him, all nations are blessed. All nations of the earth are blessed. Including you too, you are blessed. God also promised Abraham that you shall be called the father of all nations. You shall be called the father of all nations. Okay? So these are the promises of God to Abraham. These are the promises of God to Abraham. So we are going to look at how God fulfilled these promises to Abraham. How God fulfilled fulfilled his promises to Abraham. Let's see how God fulfilled his promises to Abraham. How God fulfilled his promises to Abraham. Now, before you continue, first of all, go to your Bible and read Genesis 17 from verse 15 to 17 and then chapter 21 from verse 1 to 7. Are you are true? Continue with this video. So God gave Abraham and Sarah a son named Isaac. God gave Abraham and Sarah a son Name Isaac. Okay, so the name of the son of Abraham and Sarah was Isaac. Now, the children of Abraham got a new name known as what? Israel. The children of Abraham got a new name known as Israel. Okay. Now, the Israelites had a new home called Canaan. The Israelites, they got a new home called Canaan. Now, if you're wondering, how did the children of Israel got 
get the name? How did the children of Abraham get the name Israel? They got it from the descendants of Abraham. Okay. Isaac gave birth to Esau and Jacob. And Jacob got the new name Israel. Okay. That is how the children of Abraham got that new name. Okay. That's how they got the new name. Now to get more, we read Genesis chapter 17 from 15 to 17 and chapter 21 from 1 to 7. Okay, so let's take the moral lessons of this class for today. Moral lessons. Moral lessons. Okay, first moral lesson. We should always depend on God. We should always depend on God. The anti depends solely on God. God never fails in his promises. God will never fail. He has never failed. And he will not fail. Okay? So God never fails in his promises. So you always depend on God. Now with God, nothing is impossible. Another moral lesson what, is what? With God, nothing is impossible. That means with God, we can do anything. So if God is with you, nothing is impossible for you. Okay? Now we must always have faith in God. We must always have faith in God. And we must always obey God. We must always obey God. Okay, boys and girls, this is where we're going to call it a wrap for today. Wrap, wrapping it up here. I'll see you in our next class where we we'll continue with our religion and national values. If you have questions, please do learn to come to our school website and ask your questions. Remember to do your class activity, you stay safe. And also remember to study to be approved. Okay boys and girls, bye.